Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to go over how to create a space exploration game in Sugarcube 2.0. Now this video is part of a set of, vid of three videos that cover how to create the same game, the space exploration game, Harlow in Sugarcube as with this video and also in Snowman showing the three story formats with the same game mechanics in each story format that's part of Twine 2.1. This space exploration example bars heavily from games like FTL, where randomly generated obstacles prevent the player from her goal. So our narrative premise is that a ship has taken damage while in a hazardous area of space. With the navigation system broken, you know that it will take 15 hyperspace jumps to make it out of the area and back to safety. So what are our mechanics here? So each hyperspace jump costs one unit of fuel, because the navigation system is broken, each jump will land in a random system of one to four planets. Those marked in red are high risk, high reward. Those marked in green are low risk, low reward. And the chance of red or green is 50%. So we start with 20 health, we start with two units of fuel, and we need to explore space, explore planets, and try to make our way across this hazardous area of space. Now within the editor is the text here to establish those rules that we just talked about. So we establish our health, our fuel, and the number of jumps left, as well as establishing a system of planets, which will make more sense when we look at the code. Let's explore. So as we can see here, we have a very first top option to hyper jump, which would decrease our fuel by one and decrease our number of jumps by one. However, we also have some new planets in this new system here we've landed in, and these two are green, which are low risk, low reward. So we click on them, nothing happened. Oh, and we were repaired, so we gained three health, so we'll hyper jump. Now we're down to one fuel. So click on green, and nothing happened. Now it's about to be very interesting, because we're about to jump into a new system with no fuel. And our ship tumbled and spun in the endless black. <laughs> Which is not much of an example here, unfortunately. So let's go look at the code for this. So I'm not going to discuss the start passage, because that merely points to programming the rules. So let's start there. So as I mentioned, using the set macro, we set health to 20, set fuel to 2, set system to an empty array, set number of jumps left to 15. Moving over to explore space, we start with the link macro to create a link that when clicked does these three things. Decreases our fuel by one, decreases number of jumps left by one, because remember it costs us fuel and we decrease the number of jumps left, and we go to explore space two. Now I'm gonna close this for a second to explain this. So explore space one goes to explore space two. Explore space two, goes to explore space one. And so it allows us to replicate a turn-based system. So every time we click on the link macro we're creating here, we're going to one of the two explore spaces. So we can bounce back and forth and create the effect of different turns or different reactions based on that. So going back to explore space one, the very next thing we see is the use of a division element here set with the ID of HUD then we're including a passage with the ID of HUD. So within this division is the content of whatever HUD is. So let's pause and go look at what HUD is. So HUD shows us our health and then the value of the variable health, the word fuel, the value of the variable fuel, the number of jumps left, the value of the variable number of jumps left. As well, we're also including a passage with the name check status. So let's pause to go look at that. Check status is down here. So we're using the no BR macro here in Sugarcube to replace all of this with a single white space. So we're collapsing all the white space here. And then we're testing different outcomes. So if our health is less than or equal to zero, we want to go to the pass destroyed. If our fuel is less than or equal to zero, we want to go to lost in space. If our number of jumps is less than or equal to zero, we want to go to safe. So these are our three different outcomes. If our health is, e is ever zero or less, we get destroyed. If our fuel is ever zero or less, we get lost in space. If our number of jumps is ever lost than, or less than or equal to zero, then we go to safe. So let's pause and check those out in turn. 
So destroyed, the ship exploded in flight, and it's game over. Lost in space, without fuel, the ship tumbled and spun in the endless black. Game over. And finally, safe. After 15 hyper jumps, the ship left the hazardous area and called for help. Hooray! Success! So those are our three different options included from, or go to from, check status. Check status is included in HUD. HUD is included in Explore Space 1 and Explore Space 2. So in each case, as we land in each passage, it includes HUD, HUD includes check status, and depending on what check status does, we may end up in other passages. So the last two things that are happening here is we're including the content of the passage generate system and including the content of the passage display system. So let's go look at generate system. So generate system uses the silently macro, so it stops anything from showing. So we set a temporary variable planets to using the random function in sugarcube from one to four. Set the system to a new array based on that size. So a new array of, of one minimum, four maximum. And then we use the four macro in sugarcube to iterate through that array we just created. So it's four temporary variable to zero temporary variable i less than planets, so less than whatever number, because that will be the length of the new array, and then we increase that i until it is greater than planets. For each loop in this for macro, we set system using an index of i, so starting with zero, to either red or green, using the either function in sugarcube. So we're building an array with the contents of the string either red or green for each time, starting with at least one and a maximum of four. So we're generating a new system as we saw. So it'll be the strings red or green, which is how we display them here. So we're using no BR again to collapse all this white space, using a four macro again right here for another temporary variable I set to zero. I is less than system length, which is the the length of the array system we just generated in generate system and then we test it so okay if the index of system is equal to red then create a link replace macro with the result so the string either red or green if in this case red so if it is clicked then include the content of the passage show outcome red down here if it's green show that, include the content of the passage show outcome green. And so that's what we saw in practice here. We created a series of links, either red or green, and when we clicked on them, we replaced the link with content of those passages, either show outcome red or show outcome green. And then finally, because we were collapsing all this white space, we use a break rule here, so every time it creates it, it adds some extra HTML, and it shows either red and then a new line green or whatever outcome was generated. So between the two of these, we generate a new system, generate a new array of contents of the strings red or green, then we display that. And then depending on if those links are clicked, we show the content of either show outcome red or show outcome green. Now let's look at red. Again, we're collapsing all this white space which I didn't quite get from top to bottom here. And then we're setting percentages using the random function in sugarcube from one to 10. So if percentage is greater than or equal to six, then we set found health to random from one to five, set found fuel from random one to three. And then we show that outcome. So the hostile environment damaged the ship, but extra fuel, extra fuel was found, which would be uh, health decrease or found fuel and then we adjust those numbers else if percentages is less than or equal to three we find a random number of health and then we lose that health we show that outcome and then we adjust health or else nothing happened and then finally because either our health or our fuel possibly was changed in some way we want to go ahead and replace the content of the element with the ID HUD which is what this is right here with the content of the passage HUD. 
So let's pause to go look at that for just a moment to remind ourselves. So health, fuel, number of jumps, and then check status. Now the reason we're doing that here is because health or fuel might have been adjusted. So we need to check again to see if, did the ship just blow up or did we just run out of fuel? So we see in show outcome red, that the last thing we do is replace that content and then double check by including check status if we ran out of health or fuel or if we made our number of jumps. And it's the th same thing with show outcome green. Similar idea here. Now remember, green is low risk, low reward. So we see chances are so much, are, are less here. So one, we found fuel. We see six, uh, we maybe got repaired, <clears throat> which is what we saw in practice. And again, we repeat the same thing. Update the content of HUD uh, through including a passage with HUD. So we see from Explore Space 1 that we create a link for a hyper jump. We include HUD, which it also includes check status. And then each time, either Explore Space 1 or Explore Space 2, it includes generate system and includes display system which generates a new array of red and green and then displays based on that creating link replace macros each time with the content of show outcome red or show outcome green depending on if they are clicked at all finally depending on the outcomes of show outcome hud gets updated and then because hud gets updated check status gets run and then depending on those we either destroyed lost in space or safe <laughs> which is a fair a fairly complex uh creation here of different ways of doing this notice of course that we can include passages that include passages as a way to break up mechanically what we want to do here so explore space one includes generate system and includes display system and includes hud hud includes check status so we can build complexity within our twine stories by using the include macro in SugarCube to include multiple patches as a way to breaking up that code. We can also, as I demonstrated here, create a link replace macros that when clicked include other things to then act on those outcomes. And in each case in generate system, we can generate using the for macro a new array and then using the four macro and display system, iterate over that array to create outcomes. And so finally, this is an example of here of creating the space exploration game in SugarCube using its functions and its macros. Now remember, of course, that this is actually a set, a part of a set of videos where this covers how to create the space exploration in SugarCube. There's also, and they'll be linked in the description of this video on YouTube, links to the video that covers space exploration in Harlow and space exploration in Snowman, in each case replicating this mechanics and functionality across each story format to show how they differ and how remarkably similar they are, in fact, and how to implement this game in each story format.